so with that, our final uh, panel member for this session is uh, Andrew Beggs. Andrew is a professor of uh, cancer genetic and surgery at Birmingham University, uh, the hospital in Birmingham in the UK. He, read, he runs uh, a mixed lab, wet and dry, uh, for oncology, immunogenetics, and also organoid model. Andrew? Thanks, Olivier. Um, thanks all for coming to, to listen to my talk today, and thanks to my lab for sitting there who do all the hard work. Joe and Nick there, I can't take credit for most of this. They're the ones who should be here. I'm going to talk about what we like to specialize in the lab, which is doing things that say people, other people say are impossible. So people say you can't get mutations out of ctDNA or nanopore and hopefully I'm going to prove to you that you can. Um, so we've developed a homebrew ctDNA sequencing protocol using a multiplex amplicon panel, uh, which we borrowed from a commercial provider, but we've adapted it such that you can take the amplicons and feed them straight into an LSK1, sorry, LSK114 kit. The reason we've done this is because the, high, the current methods for ctDNA analysis, hybridization, are slow, and so by using PCR, we can very rapidly go from a sample to a result within about eight hours. We've also made it work on the Flongal, and it costs 75 pounds all in, including all the enzymes, reagents, and sample input. And you can show it also works between anything from five nanograms and beyond of both FFP and ctDNA. And the protocol generates sufficient coverage of 10,000 X in eight hours. So this is a truly patient-facing test that we can very rapidly take into clinical use. Now, they said you can't detect low variant and low frequency with nanopore, so the top, this is IGV for those who haven't seen it before, and the top panel is non-duplex, but the bottom panel there is duplex sequencing to show you the power that duplex sequencing adds to these amplicon runs. And this is KRAS codon 12 and 13, which is one of the most commonly mutated oncogenes. And in this reference sample we use with another variant allele frequency about 15 to and 6%, you can see that both the duplex and the non-duplex detect it. And what you can hopefully notice, and bear in mind this is a very low input sample, is how noise-free the reads are, how easy it is to pick out the mutations showing that this panel really is the answer to these things. Now, the next problem is that with these circulating tumor DNA panels, it can be very difficult to detect long indels. And this is where nanopore comes into itself. This is a very long deletion, 15 base pairs in EGFR, a common one in lung cancer at 2% varying allele frequency. Now, in the top panel, you can see without duplex on, it sort of works, but it's a bit noisy. But you can see at the bottom with the IGV panel there, it displays the uh, indel there, clear as day, easily pickable out and it can easily be detected with a variant caller such as CLAIR-3, which we've been using. Final one, PIC3CA, E45K, another common variant that you detect in lung cancer and circulating tumor DNA. Once again, 1.5 variant allele frequency, very easily pickable outable. You can see at the top there, it's relatively noisy, but duplex removes all the noise. So we've shown now with this panel, which can take commercial PCR panels, modify them and put them into nanopore, we can get a variant allele frequency of down to about 0.1 to 0.2 which is a really transformative technology for circulating tumor DNA analysis. So when we compared it to a reference panel, we detected 95% of the mutations in the Syracare ctDNA re reference panel that were covered by our panel. The only one that wasn't detected was uh, one with 1% 1 variant allele frequency, and we think this has nothing to do with the panel. We did detect it. It's to do with the tweaks we need to make to the duplex caller. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Uh